As long as you do a mix of things, your church will grow. If you only do public evangelism, it's not going to grow. But if you think as every Sabbath as an evangelistic opportunity, and every year you do one big meeting, oh, this would be wonderful in the mix. If you look at the book of Acts, and I, I didn't have the time to do the exercise here, but if you do the exercise, and if you go chapter by chapter, listing all of the ministries and evangelism they did in the book of Acts, you will find more than 90 different ones. Jail ministry, women's ministries, men's ministry, king's ministries. They, you have to do all of them. Not you particularly, but your members. And not even just your church because you can't do all of that. But collectively we can. So we found out that almost all of these churches do have public evangelism. Uh, but it's in the mix. Don't only rely on it. Have everything else. And I personally, in my church, I did one or two every year. Short ones. Uh, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I still do them every year. I, do. I did one last year in San Antonio. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm a strong believer in that. As long as you do many other things. And as long as you train your members to do it. And I will come back to you later on because I'm going to show you another PowerPoint in a few minutes. Uh, but uh, uh, according to Mark Middleburg in his book, The Contagious Church, even mega churches, from time to time, they have to do what they call high impact events. And those high impact events could be an evangelistic media or could be any form to reach your community. Yeah. VBS should be evangelistic. Here's another thing, by the way. If, if the program is not evangelistic, either scrap it or repurpose it. Exactly. Remember that word, repurpose. Yes. So what would be something that we cannot scrap? Sabbath school. That's very important. But it has to be repurposed. Vacation Bible School, repurposed for the, you know, for evangelism. Pathfinder, those are good ministries. Move them into toward evangelism. And really, if you train your members to bring people to the Lord, evangelistic meeting would not be any problem at all. You do them, people come to them. And uh, people get baptized because their friends are there. Their pastor is bringing them. The member become their pastor. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Yesterday you spoke about how important it is, the perspective that the pastor has and how he sees his challenge. And that is correlated to the growth of the church. Absolutely. What other factors, criteria, uh, constructs did you find that are important for, uh, that are common in all these pastors which are determinants in the growth of the church? I mean, do you have other commonalities that you found? Yes. I'm going to answer this in two ways. Number one is, what is the biblical role of the pastor? Trainer. But you know, when I was an engineer, I have to be trained by somebody else. So training by itself does not define the role of the pastor. Shepherd. But, but, but if you only focus on the shepherding aspect, the church will never grow. An evangelist. Leadership. Discipleship. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, there was a problem. And it uh, and became kind of also a racial problem. The, the, the Hebrew and the Greek were not getting along with each other. They came to the disciples and said, fix that problem for us. We would like you to serve our group as well as you are serving the other group. What was their answer to them? 
it's not run to the word of the word of God. Okay, great. And what else? Prayer. Our role is to be involved in the prayer, ministry of the word, and two more things. They did. <laughs> Training, which is the, the ministry of discipleship. They said, we're not going to do it, but the need has to be fulfilled. So they train other people to do the, uh, to do the ministry. Four things. The needs have to be fulfilled. But we do it through prayer, the ministry of the word, and the discipleship formation. That's really ultimately what the work of the pastor is. And the pastor has to cast the vision to pray, to read the Bible, and that every one of us should be involved in creating another minister who will do the ministry. Open with, you, with me to 2 Timothy 2.2. Second Timothy two two. All right, let me read it to you. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. What is he saying? You have, every one of us have to train other person to do the ministry we are doing. That's what he is saying. In fact, I want to tell you, my friends, if Jesus did not do this, there wouldn't be a church today. That's right. That's right. Exactly. It went all the way from Jesus to Paul to Timothy, all the way to us. Yes. You know, experience has taught me that it's impossible for any pastor to train members for every ministry in the congregation. It doesn't happen. Okay, uh, a pastor does not have all the. Could gifts. you give him the microphone so we could hear you better? When you read the the, the the three the three chapters in the in the New Testament that talks about spiritual gifts, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians yeah. 4, none of them suggest that the pastor has all the gifts necessary for not. ministry in a church. The pastor's yeah. role is to empower people, identify those individuals whom God has gifted Absolutely. for a particular ministry, empower them, and equip them. And equip them does not always mean training because sometimes that person can do that ministry much better than you as a pastor. Absolutely. But you provide them with the, with the resources um, and, and you help build a team around them so that they can run with the ministry that the Spirit has empowered them and equipped them. Not only the resources, there is something even more important than the resources and that's creating the culture for it. Absolutely. Yeah. By the way, I don't feel like I'm going to have time to cover another topic. So, we will just deal with your question and you read the book. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you discover were the most effective strategies in retaining new people in the churches that you've studied? What kept those people around? Could you wait for a second on that? I want to finish his... Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but, but please don't forget it. I want to cover that issue of the training. And then why it says every church should be a training center. Another place I say that every church should be a seminary. Amen. Yeah. Now here's a, a fun exercise I like to share with you. <laughs> we are in January right now, beginning of the year. I, we don't have a board to write on, but but keep the figures in mind. We have Church A. Church A has 100 people in attendance. And over the year, they added 100 more in attendance uh, uh, to that church through transfer, through baptism, whatever it is. What will be the attendance at the end of the year for that church? 200. How many of you agree with him? Uh, let me see your hands. How many of you say the attendance at the end of the year will be 200? 
Do I, well, yeah, you, you are, yeah, you are uh, uh, finding a way out for yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, what about 100 plus zero? What will be the attendance at the end of the year? 70. Now we all, that's very easy to understand. Because somebody will die, somebody will move out, somebody will get upset with you for some reason. Yeah. And it would be 70. And of course the morale is so low, people don't like to go to a church with low morale. They leave you. But 100 plus 100, listen to this carefully, is equal to 100. And I could prove it to you through hundreds of cases, thousands. 100 plus 100 is 100. Um, I, hate I hate it too. <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever noticed it? Look at churches. I could tell you churches, one of them for instance, was 350 in attendance in the, nine, in the 70s. And the, the membership was 400. Today, that church, not today, last couple of years ago, was 300 in attendance and yet the membership is over 800. You know what happened? They keep adding people to the books but not to attendance. That is because, my friends, there is something... Do you have a pen with you? Sure. Thank you. Listen to this, because this is extremely important. And, and people, here I'll give you the, thank you. It's a bottle of water. If I make a hole here right now, where will the water stop? At the hole. I could take this whole Pacific Ocean, I don't know how many thousands of years will take me, and I will put it here. Where will eventually the water stop? At the hole. At the hole. It doesn't matter. The hole in the church is leadership. Most people, when they are thinking about evangelism, they are thinking about baptism. We need to think in two tracks. One track is the baptism, how to reach the community. But in the other track is what can we do to raise leaders to take care of those people who are coming to the church. Amen. Let me illustrate that to you. I'd like to have four people come to the front for a second. I like four, but well, we, need, we need a woman now. Come. No, you, I, I need. Uh, 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 come over here. No, you come over here. And uh, Lindsay, come over here. You are Lindsay too? No. Oh uh, my. <laughs> okay, you stand over here. And uh, Lindsay, you stand over here. Okay. This is my church. It's a wonderful church. They have a great pastor, you know. Uh, these are, uh, you know, some of my members here. And Lindsay have the gift of nurturing, discipling. She loves the Lord. She loves uh, the church. She loves people. So uh, she gives him Bible study, he and his family. They do a lot of things together. When she's not in church, she will call her, Hey, we miss you. Let me pray for you. Come over to my house tomorrow evening. Let's have supper together. Um, but uh, the church is really growing. It's a fantastic church. I'd like to have four, uh, three more people to come to the front. Three more. Please come. Come. Let's have one man now so we could balance it. <laughs> no, you go on the other side. Yeah. The Lord blessed us and we doubled. As a pastor, I know I have a problem on my hand. And the problem is that she and him and her are going to leave if I not connect them with the church. 
if I not nurture them, if I don't disciple them. So I come to Lindsay. Now remember, uh, maybe this would not fit her very well, but she uh, she is married. She have kids. You, you, I know. You, are you married? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, but we'll assume. Uh, yeah, we're th you know through the eyes of faith. We're seeing all of this. <laughs> maybe she doesn't want that. I don't know. But that's not the object here. I say, Lindsay, you, you are great in discipling people and nurturing them. As you know, the Lord has blessed our church. The Lord has sent us all of those people. Would you please concede to disciple three more people? Uh, you, you know, before you answer me, just remember, there is nobody else in the church who could do it as good as you are. <laughs> you, you are the best. <laughs> and, 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 and Lindsay, please remember that if we don't do it, we're going to lose those people. <laughs> well, I, I hope I put enough guilt on her. <laughs> okay. What, what, what would you say? Sure. Sure. Say what your mom says in my church. <laughs> your mom at, uh, goes to your church? Okay, what does she say? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Let's say she says yes. Let's say she says that. You know what? She's not going to do a good job. She's going to burn out. Right. Her husband's going to get mad at her. And her husband and her kids are going to get yeah. resentful. And she's going to get upset with her pastor because he just keeps <laughs> the whole family and her husband will hate me. <laughs> but that's even irrelevant. The main issue is that she's going to burn out. And here's what will happen actually. Uh, she just came to church. She got baptized at the evangelistic meeting, but she disappeared from our radar. So just go home. She, she, we don't even know what happened. Every evangelistic meeting, there's somebody like that. Yeah. She says, he's very strong. I don't need to worry about him. You just go home. She said, he's very difficult to get along with. You could go home, you know. Yeah. So what what are we uh, what do we end up with? What did we start with? Because her capacity is a three. That's it. What should have happened? She should have discipled her and him and him to take care of the other three. But very few churches think about that. Yes. I have a follow-up question. Yes. Uh, 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 don't just stay where you are, because I'm not done with this. Could you wait yeah, yeah, yeah. till we finish the illustration? <laughs> Open with me now to Matthew nine. I'm, I'm sure all of you know this text by heart. Matthew nine. Here is the most neglected promise in the entire scripture. It's a promise Jesus gave us, but 95% of pastors don't pay any attention to it. Let's read it. Then Jesus went about all of the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep without shepherd. Then he said to the disciple, the harvest is what? Plentiful. How much is the harvest? Uh, Plentiful. 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 For you guys, it's 8 million. That's a lot. We have a, a, a hundred pastors. It's impossible for a hundred people to take care of that. It's impossible for even 40,000 members you got here to take care of it. So what does Jesus say? Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Every pastor should take this verse and acclaim it all the time. Amen. And therefore, I am praying that God will raise another Lindsay. Amen. And that Lindsay is a praying that God will raise another one to do the ministry she does. Amen. 
And then, if you are a Sabbath school teacher, pray that the Lord will 